afternoon. I'm going to take a look at um, a beer by what is currently a controversial brewer. Um, I had I had forgotten or didn't hear a lot about the hoo ha around this because hoo ha. I guess I shouldn't say that. Anyway, <laughs> around this because um, I haven't really been really been paying a lot of attention to um, beer these last couple of months, but. Um, uh, I have some friends who um, definitely had some opinions about the happenings um, and diversity in general um, in the beer industry. So um, I guess we'll talk a little bit about that while I sip on this Founders Breakfast Stout. So it's a double chocolate coffee oatmeal stout um, ringing in at 8.3% and 60 IBUs. Um, so... Um, Let's talk about the beer first, and then you can cut out if diversity is, you know, too much for you, I suppose. And we'll talk about why that's important. Um, and I suppose you can opt out. So, um, oatmeal stout. I'm excited about that because it's going to be nice and creamy. They add oatmeal to it, and it gives it a nice full body to it. Um, they say cinnamon colored. Oh, cinnamon colored head. Okay. I'll buy that. Um, well, the bird is disappointed that he can't get to these safety pins here, baby boy. Okay, um, this beer smells alcoholy to me, so I know, one, that it has a lot of alcohol in it, and two, um, Actually, we'll just leave it at that. I know that it has a lot of alcohol, con uh, higher alcohol content, so I expect it to be boozy. Um, but for me personally, um, I really enjoy the smell of beer, and so if I take a big whiff and it's like, you know, ethanol burn, that's a little off-putting to me. But below that, um, it's delightfully dark and roasty. It smells like coffee. Um, mm. It's got a little bit of chocolate sweetness to it. I wouldn't necessarily say it smells like chocolate. Actually, that last smell did. But it's got a hint of that sweetness to it. Um, and yeah, I suppose it has a cinnamony colored head going on. Um, otherwise, a nice dark beer. We are not seeing any light coming through this beer. Um, cheers, let's have a drink. Mm hmm Are you excited? Cheers. Cheers. I haven't taught him that yet. My first impression is that this is definitely a boozy beer. We knew that going in. Um, second thought. Um, it is inky thick, uh, which is really nice. I think for um, the boldness of this beer, there is a lot of roast going on, a lot of maltiness, a lot of coffee, um, dark coffee flavor. Hi, friend. Um, and uh, those are all good qualities. Um, and I think with a nice thick backbone to put uh, to put all of that over, um, it balances nicely. It does taste a little boozy though. Also the lingering flavor for me is um, very um, French roasty. It's very dark and um, mm, acrid almost. Um, and so like I'm inclined to pour some milk in here. I guess I like lattes better than black coffee. But um, it is delicious. I think it would be a little bit better if it had a chance to warm up just a little bit. Um, so the back of this says, um, brewed with an abundance of flaked oats, bitter and imported chocolates, and two types of coffee. This stout has an intense fresh roasted java nose topped with a frothy cinnamon colored head that goes forever. Um, I've swirled it around a lot, so I guess I've dissipated the head. I didn't really see it very heady, but um, this is a big, bold coffee designed to be a big, bold flavor profile. And so um, they achieve that nicely. 
Um, the booziness, meh, you know, I have feelings about that. Um, I would prefer it to smell and taste a little bit less boozy. Where are you going, friend? Yes, okay. Um, so, um, Founders Breakfast Stout seems to be one of the, oh, I don't know, basic, basic, uh, it's very widely available, and this seems to be one of the um, commonly, um, consumed beers and a lot of people have uh, a lot of people know it so um i'm very interested in knowing what you all think about it i'm sure um all my beer reviewing friends have already done a review of it um i did a couple of other founders um beers like all day ipa or something like that um but never breakfast out um would you drink it for breakfast like if you were on vacation and it was a um, you know a drink beer for breakfast day um let me know i would love to hear um so Overall, I think this is a really great beer. You know, for a stout, we're always expecting something with a really big, bold flavor and aroma profile, and this delivers 100%. I really like the the flaked oat content that gives it that nice kind of thick, inky um, body to it. I think it really complements the, the bold flavors of the beer nicely. Um, I personally would like it to feel, smell less boozy, not feel taste and smell less boozy. The boozy feel is what we're all drinking a beer for, I suppose. Um, so that's my thought on it. Um, so also, I think ironically, I just looked down and see, saw that um, the cap says brewed for us. So that is an excellent segue into, oh, I know, excellent segue, an excellent segue into um, the diversity issues that are going on. Um, so, uh, Founders has a lawsuit, um, and in that lawsuit, they, um, during that lawsuit, during the month, actually the month that the lawsuit was filed, they made an offer to somebody named, um, Gracie, um, to part, to be a diversity, I don't even know what her job title was, what was her job title, diversity, um, Diversity and Inclusion Director of Michigan's Largest Brewery. Uh, because they knew that they had some um, diversity and inclusion issues that needed to be addressed. Um, and um, so they hired her the month that the lawsuit was filed um, and then proceeded to not listen to her. Uh, Gracie stuck around for um, only nine months and resigned um, just this past October, um, I mean, two weeks ago, um, because um, the... Uh, all of the recommendations that she had were not being followed. I think there was some leaked testimony um, that happened where um, the owner of Founders was a little squirmy about answering questions about people's race um, and, um, and certainly weren't listening to any of the recommendations that the person that they hired, the specialist that they hired, was making um, to them. So um, there's some statistics out there about um, what... Uh, what the diversity of the of the beer industry looks like, and I think most of us don't even need to have those numbers read off. We know that it is predominantly white and predominantly male, um, and um, so uh, I think that um, so for the industry, I think um, a Brewers Association survey found that 88% of craft brewery owners. Um, responded to the to a survey that they were white as opposed to just 1% of owners um, identifying as black. Um, and then 4% of um, those um, those breweries employer, employees are black and just 7.5 reported employing a woman um, with the title brewer. Um, and it's it constantly amazes me. I get, I'm not actually, I'll leave that comment out. Um, so there are some statistics for the people who are in within the Brewers Association, um, but um, Founders itself said that 18% um, of its 600 plus employees self-identify as non-Caucasian. Um, you know, that's a big non-Caucasian. That's such a huge window. But let's say non-white. Um, and, um, and that they don't know how many, um, minorities are in management. Um, and so 
unfortunately, they had a black woman in the role of diversity, what is her job again? Diversity and inclusion director, um, which to me speaks management, but perhaps to founders it did not. Um, and um, they're not collecting that data, which is really interesting. I think a lot of companies, and, and I feel like a lot of industries can have this conversation, but the tech industry specifically has been working on this conversation where they're collecting and tracking this data um, not only to know where they are, because wherever you are is where you are. Let's fix it from there. Um, so collecting this data and then working to improving uh, to improve it. And um, so for that, um, it's interesting to me that a company who knows that there are diversity and inclusion problems and has specifically gone out and made an offer to somebody um, to to fill the role of diversity and inclusion director at their company wouldn't even be paying attention to this data. Like, what the fuck, man? Um, so, um, and they're not listening to this person um, on issues that are clearly in her um, lane, you know? I mean, so uh, bad decisions were made there. So I think as a result um, of this leaked testimony, um, they went silent, founders went silent for a week and, um, and then ended up canceling a little bunch of events. I think that they closed um, the Detroit, and I'm not certain about that location, they, um, they closed the Detroit, um, tap room, possibly just, um, let's see here, Pro possibly just temporarily, but then there was a lot of hullabaloo, a lot of blowback in the, uh, brewers community about it, and people were boycotting, um, uh, events where Founders was um, participating and had a lot of things to say about it. Um, and uh, I, I just want to say that, um, you know, companies, I suppose that you can operate any way that you want um, and have issues that you do and don't care about. Um, however, when you are operating in a, uh, as a company who is serving the public, this, the public is larger than your own likes and dislikes and your own interests. And um, and you're going to have to um, be sensitive to that or pay the consequences. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Um, you know, so, fuck. You know, I mean, it's really unfortunate that a company that makes good beer can't get their business sense together enough to address really clear diversity and inclusion problems. I mean, they even reported that, um, they even reported founders, founders did admit to employees using the N-word around Evans, um, uh, and that they weren't immediately fired, and one is still with the company. Like, Really? Um, you know, here we are in 20 fucking 19 and we're going to have this conversation about why it's inappropriate and why um, stern action needs to be taken against employees that are are racist. I mean, I don't even I don't even understand why people are shocked and appalled by that. Um, so basically, founders, I guess, this is my personal message to you, get your shit together or you're not worthy of being a company, um, in the, in the, in the U.S. public. Um, you know, so that's my feelings about that. Um, I know that there are a lot of, I've been out of the YouTube kind of the space, YouTube space recently, but I have been following, hi, bird. The bird needs attention. I have been following a couple of um, brew, not breweries, um, yeah, beer tubers basically um, that are, um, gosh, now I'm going to forget what they're all called and I can't find them quickly because here we are. Um, following. Um, because I've been looking for alternative um, perspectives. I feel like um, it's very easy. It's very easy for all of us to get into our own little niche, our own little bubble, and then not understand enough about what the other perspectives are and what the the interests and um, needs are of these other communities. And so I've been trying to step out of that myself. And I'm following. Um, 
black, gosh, is it black girl drinks? Afro beer chick. Um, and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, black girls drink beer, something like that. I think those are the hashtags that she uses. Um, and, um, and another, and a couple of other, um, places that are doing beer reviews specifically, um, and really trying to raise the issue of, um, racial diversity in the brewing industry. Um, there is a society, it's called the Pink Boots Society, that is working to get more women into breweries, specifically in the, in the, in the, not in the management or tap room with boobs, um, uh, tap room with boobs um, position, but more into brewers titles where they are influencing the craft. Um, and um, they are pretty active. Uh, there's a Bay Area chapter that's pretty active and they do a lot of collaboration brews where they go in and they have um, the pink, Pink Boots Society members come in and do a brew collaboration at different breweries. So that's another great resource to check out. Um, and then one of my um, favorite beer, beer YouTube reviewers, my goodness, I couldn't even get that out, um, is Rod J. Um, and I always recommend um, that people follow him. Um, so um, if you're looking from, for some different perspectives, um, there are some that I recommend that you follow. Um, and you can find them all over the place. There are internet uh, web pages if you wanna just go find it, if you want it to be served to you, Instagram followers, uh, follow people on Instagram and then, um, you know, and I think you can follow Pink Boots Society, but you might have to be a brewer um, specifically to be a member. It is it is for brewery workers who are women. Um, and, um, and then, of course, Rod J if you want more um, beer reviews. So um, don't, don't, you know, don't back yourself into a corner and neglect all of these other aspects and other needs of these communities around us. Um, otherwise, we're not going to be successful as a people. So um, there is, <laughs> I guess that's it for now. That's almost 20 minutes worth of me talking about this shit. So probably 10 minutes after I've actually did the beer. So, um... Thanks for watching. If you've watched this far, share with me your thoughts on um, diversity and inclusion. And I would love to have some recommendations on um, people to follow, venues to follow. Um, oh, and then Black Star Line Brewing, as a matter of fact. And it's on my list to go visit them, but they, I don't even know if they have a location right now. They were in Asheville, I believe, um, and then got shut down. Um, they had um, events that happened at their brewery where they destroyed People broke in and destroyed their um, equipment and they were unable to brew for a time purely based on the fact that they were black queer um, brewery beer, uh, business owners. So, you know, um, these are these are real events that are happening right now. And um, we as a beer community can say it's fucking bullshit. Um, so everybody who has boycotted uh, founders because of the shitty things that have been coming up, you know, great job. And um, there you have it. Um, so anyway, share with me your thoughts. Please share with me your resources on people and things and places to follow um, in the comments down below because I think that we could all benefit from um, widening our perspectives a little bit. Um, and um, thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.